Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. So today we'll be looking at the breast, the anatomy of the breast, otherwise known as the mammary gland. So we'll be looking at the gross anatomy of the mammary gland. The breast is defined as the most prominent superficial fissures or structure in the anterior thoracic wall. So this is the anterior thoracic wall or the pectoral region. So the breast is defined as the prominent or the most prominent structure in the anterior thoracic wall. The breast is found both in the male and the female, but the male breast is not developed, while the female breast is well developed. The breast contains glandular tissues and the fibrous tissues, and the glandular tissues and fibrous tissues are embedded or covered by fats that are found in the subcutaneous layer. So, in the subcutaneous layer, there are fats that are found there. This fat covers the granular tissues and the fibrous tissues that are found in the breast. Then the breast also contains the nerve fibers, the lymphatic vessels, and also some blood vessels. So, these are found in the breast. So, another important feature in the breast is the prominence of the tip or the apex of the breast have a pointed structure known as the nipple and the nipple is surrounded by a dark pigmented area of the skin known as the areola so the breast contain the mammary gland or glandular tissues but in male it is rudiment and not functional though it has some uh, epithelia cord and some dots but in female, it is well developed and serves as an accessory reproductive organ or gland uh, in the body of the female. So we've been able to see the general features or the general structure in the breast. Let's look at the female breast now. So remember that I told us that in the female breast that the mammary gland is well developed. So the mammary gland is covered by uh, fats and the fats that covers the mammary gland or that covers the uh, glandular tissues, the fat that covers it determines the size of the female breast. This is to say that the female breast accumulates a, a lot of fats during puberty. There are fat depositions that surround the uh, mammary gland thereby causing the increase in the size of the female breast. Then, um, the size of the female breast can also be determined by dietary factor, ethnic factor, and genetic factors. Then coming to the shape of the female breast, it can be conical, it can be hemispherical, it can be pyriform, it can be pendulous, and it can also be flat in shape. Then the function of the female breast, like I told us, it serves as an accessory reproductive organ that help in the uh, ejection of milk to feed the newborn then the quadrants of the breast in the breast we have about four quadrants we have about four quadrants of the breast let's assume this is the breast we have about four quadrants so we have the uh, the superior lateral quadrant the superior medial quadrant the inferior lateral quadrant and the inferior medial quadrants. So the essence of this quadrant is that the breast contains a lot of lymphatic vessels in it. And in the case of cancer, uh, the cancer cells spread faster through these lymphatic vessels. So uh, dividing the breast into quadrants helps the doctor or the surgeon to be able to localize which quadrant of the breast is affected that is affected by the cancer cells or which uh, part of the quadrant that the cancer uh, cells are spread so that is the essence the superior lateral quadrant the inferior lateral quadrant the superior medial quadrant and the inferior medial quadrant so that is it for the quadrant of the breast let's look at the extent of the breast the breast extends transversely from the lateral border of the sternum down to the mid axillary line. 
it extends transversely from the lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line here and vertically from the second thread to the sixth thread from the second thread to the sixth thread so that is the extent of the breast so that is to say that the breast occupy this area of the thorax okay let's look at the structure of the breast of the female breast remember that i told us that the female breast contain the mammary gland a well developed mammary gland and you know during puberty age of 8 10 to 15 the female breast begin to enlarge in size this is a result of fat deposits that surrounds or that covers the mammary gland and the mammary gland is a modified sweat gland so you can see that the mammary gland in the female breast is well developed and we have the retromammary space the retromammary space is defined as a space between the pectoral fascia and the and the breast this is what i mean after the uh, pectoralis major and minor muscle there is a fascia that covers it which is known as the pectoral fascia then after that pectoral fascia you now see the breast right so there is a space between the pectoral fascia and the breast that space is known as the retro mammary space and it contains some fats and these fats that it contains allow the breast to move freely at the level of the pectoral fascia. Having said that, then another important feature in the female breast is a cylindrical uh, or conical uh, dark area at the tip or the apex of the female breast, and this is known as the nipple. And the nipple uh, does not contain any air. It does not contain any fat or uh, sweat gland. It doesn't contain it. And also, the nipple also have uh, is surrounded rather by a dark pigmented area of the skin known as the areola. And this areola contain uh, numerous sebaceous glands. And these sebaceous glands secrete oily substances that lubricate the nipple and the areola during pregnancy and also during lactation. Then the nipple contain uh, circularly arranged smooth muscles, and these circularly arranged smooth muscles, because the lactiferous ducts open into the nipple, so during suckling, these smooth muscles causes the compression of the lactiferous ducts, thereby allowing milk ejection or allowing milk to be let down. So that is what the smooth muscle in the nipple does. Then the other uh, fissure that is found in the breast is the, the uh, lactiferous dome that opens into the nipple. If you trace it backward or posteriorly, you see that the lactiferous dome open posteriorly into alveolar-like uh, structure uh, that is known as the mammary gland. So this alveolar-like uh, structure, it looks like a lobo about 15 to 20 lobo so this 15 to 20 lobo that the lactiferous ducts open into behind is known as the together they are called the mammary gland and at the level of the areola the lactiferous duct dilates the lactiferous duct dilates to form the lactiferous sinus so the essence of this dilation is that after uh, the baby must have suckled. There are some droplets of milk that are temporarily stored in the lactiferous sinus, so that in the next suckling, the uh, once the baby starts suckling, this milk that are deposited in the lactiferous sinus begin to flow down, thereby encouraging the newborn to continue to suckle. And once the newborn continues to suckle, the letdown or the ejection the flex is being initiated so that is the essence of the lactiferous sinus then this is what i mean let's assume that this is the this is the breast then this is the the lactiferous dots and you can see at the level of the alveolar 
the lactivelous dots there are some dilutions there and this dilution is known as the lactivelous sinus So at the behind or the posterior part, this lactiferous sinus open into alveolar-like structures. And these are lobu. So these are the lobu. This is the lactiferous sinus. This is the lactiferous Dots. This is the nipple. So you can see what I said before. Why this is the nipple? This at the level of the areola, the lactiferous dots dilates to form the lactiferous sinus, and I've explained what the lactiferous sinus does. Then it continues behind and open into lobus, about 15 to 20 lobus, which all together are called the mammary gland. So let's proceed to the next fissure. Then another important fissure in the breast is there is a fibrous stroma that uh, connects the skin, the fats and the gland to the pectoral fascia. This fibrous stroma also serves as a septum. So it is called the suspensory ligament of Cooper. Suspensory ligament of Cooper that connects or anchors the skin and the parts and the uh, gland to the pectoral fascia. Then we've been able to see the size, the shape, the function, the quadrant, the extent, the structures, then the blood supply. The mammary gland is highly vascular, so the mammary gland is supplied by the perforating branches of the internal thoracic artery. It is also supplied by the lateral thoracic artery, the superior thoracic artery, and the thoracoacromial branch of the axillary artery. Then also the lateral branch of the posterior intercostal artery. All these arteries supply the mammary gland. Then coming to the venous drainage, we have the axillary vein and the internal thoracic vein. Then let's look at the nerve supply. The lateral and the anterior cutaneous branch of the port to cyst intercostal nerve. Then coming to the lymphatic drainage, the, the lateral quadrants, the lateral quadrants, both the superior lateral and the inferior lateral, is uh, drained by the axillary lymph node. So the lateral quadrant is drained by the axillary lymph node. It is drained by the inferior deep cervical lymph node. It is also drained by the deltopectorial lymph node, the interpectorial lymph node, and the supraclavicular lymph node. Then the medial quadrants here. The medial quadrant here is drained by the parasternal lymph node. Then the inferior quadrant, that is both the inferior lateral and the inferior medial, is drained by the abdominal lymph node. Then the skin of the breast, apart from the areola and nepo, is drained by the ipsilateral axillary lymph node the inferior the cervical lymph node so that this lymph node drains the breast then the axillary lymph node uh, empties into the clavicular lymph node and from the clavicular lymph node it empties into the subclavian lymph node then the parasternal lymph node empties into the uh, bronchiomediastinal lymph node and from there into the lymphatics that drain the uh, thoracic viscera then that is it for the lymphatic drainage of the breast. The lymphatic drainage of the breast, I forgot to tell us, is very important because the 
cancer cells, or in the case of cancer, the cancer cells spread faster through these lymphatic vessels. It spread faster through this lymphatic vessel. And that is why the lymphatic vessel of the breast is very important. Then, let's see the clinicals. The first clinical we have is gynecomastia. Gynecomastia is defined as the enlargement of the male breast during puberty. So during puberty, the male breast begins to enlarge and after puberty or after adolescence, it goes back to normal. And also gynecomastia can also be caused by an imbalance, hormonal imbalance between estrogen and androgenic hormones. So whenever there is imbalance between male and female hormone in the body of the male, it leads to gynecomastia, that is the enlargement of the breast. Then we have the changes in the breast. The first change in the breast is during puberty. You notice that there is accumulation or deposition of fats around the mammary gland, causing the enlargement of the breast. Then the second change in the breast in the female breast is um, during pregnancy or immediately after delivery. The first set of milk that is released is known as colostrum. So this is the uh, another change in the in the female breast. Then the other change that we have is during pregnancy. You notice that the breast begin to enlarge and even during lactation the breast begin to enlarge then after that it goes back to normal then another change is at old age you notice that the breast is saggy and also uh, it is small because of reduction in fat deposits <laughs> then this is it for the changes in the breast then we have a condition known as carcinoma of the breast this is the growth of cancerous cells or malignant tumor in the breast of the female and i've told us that this cancerous cells spread through the lymphatic vessel and also you can be able to see these cancerous cells or this uh, tumor uh, through placing the breast in mammogram so that is it then another clinical case we have is polymastia Polymastia simply means having more than two breasts in the, in the body. That is an accessory breast other than the two that we already have. Then we have amastia. Amastia is when there is absence of breast in the female. That is amastia. Then we have polytidia. Polytidia is uh, having more than two nipple in the, in the breast. That is the nipple can be on top of the breast here and it can be in the abdomen then the accessory nipple rather can be on top of the breast and it can be on the on the abdomen or anywhere anything other than the two nipple is known as polytidia then we have arteria arteria means the absence of nipple in the breast so this is all for the for the breast so at the end of this teaching we've been able to see the general feature of the breast and also the female breast. The essence of seeing the general feature of the breast is since the female breast have uh, some structures that are not in the male breast. So that is why we were able to see the general feature of the breast first before going into the female breast. So we've come to the end of this teaching. I'll encourage you to try as much as possible to like this video comment on this video and please share this video to your friends. Thank you very much.